Okay, so mortgage rates, well, they've been a little crazy. And in fact, uh, with the volatility in the market, we've actually seen a pretty good increase. So, what do you do to protect yourself and how best to plan for this? All right, so George Moorhead with Bentley Properties. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, listen, we do this every single week. It's free. This way you get the best information so you can plan for your family and you can make, you know, actual good business decisions because that is all this is about. Ask your questions, ring the bell, hey, share the link. All right. Now, let's get on with what's going on. So a couple of weeks ago, like about three weeks ago or so, we were at a rate of about 3.25. And we said, hey, listen, you know, you might want to be a little bit mindful because rates are going to start bumping up. Well, we've come up to 3.875. So we've, we've come up a full half a point, and that's a half a percent. And understand that it is seeing volatility in the bond market. You need to be watching the 10-year treasury. Watch your bond market, watch your treasury. Because as you see volatility in those markets, you're gonna see volatility in mortgage interest rates. So if you want, make sure you pay attention. You can give any of us a quick jingle. Uh, we can send you three lenders that track the mortgage rates consistently every day to help you make a really good decision. In fact, when we talk about really good decisions, your second home, for those of you that are looking for a second home, not an investment property, but a second home, you might want to get off uh, your duffer <laughs> and get out there because as of March 19, Fannie and Freddie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are putting additional, what we call overlays. Okay, you might say, George, what the heck is an overlay? All right, well, that's a really simple thing. It's, it's, a, it's a term or a condition on top of the basic loan programs. As an example, when uh, you look at mortgage rates and people start quoting mortgage rates for the day, let's say it's 3.875, that's for a single family home. Okay, but for a condo, there's an overlay. And many times that can be a quarter of a point or a quarter of a percent on top of the rate. And a lot of folks are like, really? Yeah, you know, you have multifamily, you have an investment property, non-owner occupied. Boop, there's a overlay on top of that rate. And so <clears throat> there are different conditions and different terms that you need to be mindful of. Okay, you need to go back and watch five questions to ask when getting quoted mortgage interest rates. I'll have Marie post that link again. Super important for you guys to watch. Uh, here's an example. So I received... Uh, from a lender sent me an email and I track these and they're like, oh, you know, we're offering rates at 3.25%. Uh, and I thought, wow, well, that's pretty impressive. That's good marketing. So then I took a look at the terms. Okay, well, that means that you're, so remember conforming right now is $891,000, right? That's your, your conforming loan. Above that becomes a jumbo. All right. Their comment was, hey, you know what? You cannot, <laughs> this is super funny. This is why this is so important. You can't have a loan balance greater than $650,000, okay? And this is new money, per new purchase, not refinance. Refinance costs more. There's a overlay, right? Okay, so when you uh, take a look at it, it was like $650,000 maximum, okay? Uh, you had to have a credit score greater than 740, okay, and it had to be conventional, okay. Well, that kicks out just about <laughs> about everybody except for if you're way down south and, and up north because people cannot meet that guideline, but it is a teaser rate, and they look at that and they go, oh my gosh, this is amazing, let me go after this, and it is not accurate. So you need to watch the video, five questions you need to ask because those all come into place. Look, it's marketing. They're trying to get you to call them. And then once they get you, you know, <laughs> into their web, you're good to go. That's why our three lenders are so fabulous to work with because there's no strings attached. They give you quality information, the accurate up information up front. Oh, by the way, it was also points 
to buy that rate down. And I want to say it was a quarter or three eighths of a percent to buy that rate down. So there was an additional buy down on top of that. So it's unless you know what you're looking for and the right questions to ask, you could totally be brought into a program that you don't even fit. All right. That's the point. OK, let's move on. Uh, Non-owner occupies at four and a half percent. Now, you might think, OK, George, it's still January. Our spring market truly hasn't kicked it into gear yet. But has it? Kind of has. Because look at this. We're at 817 homes new on market on our running seven day average. Remember, it was 100 and I think like 110 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I think last week it was just a, you know, a couple of hundred. Now we're at 800. We have 983 pending and 849 that have closed. Remember, those are going to be from December, those closings, 30 day on average. So when we take a look at what is our market doing, are the interest rates having a negative impact? Too early to tell. Realistically, the answer is going to be no. Why? One, they are still historically low, but you're going to have the FOMO, fear of missing out. These people, they're going to be driving out there to say, I got to get the rate. I got to get the better rate. I got to tie something up and I'm going to pay lots of money. Okay. You need to pull that emotion out. You have to cool it down. Why? Because you will overspend and then you may run into an appraisal issue. Okay. And that's not something you want to do, but understand even though our inventory total homes for sale, and this is single family only, not condos, single family only is down 11.2%. And you might go, George, holy mackerel, that's a big number. Now nah, it's not because we, we have, I think we have, well, what was it like 2000, 2300, how many homes total available? Nope. That was, that was uh, pended was 2000 or uh, new on market was 2000. We have a total of 3000, 139 homes throughout the entire Northwest MLS. It's only 400 homes less than what we had this time last year. And last year in 2020, were pretty record set years. Okay. So we've got, we've got a pretty much trying to be a world record here. Uh, and we're trying to do that very thing. Now here's, here, this is super important. So during our Wednesday training with, uh, with the team and whatnot, and, we were going over different things. You know, one of uh, the newer folks uh, had asked, you know, George, what, do, what does that mean? And I said, it's funny, I've, uh, I don't have the chart here, but normally where this is at 3,000 homes, okay, we're normally between 18,000 and 22,000 homes. We have 3,139. Our, our inventory is, is less than seven days. So those numbers, you know, if we had, if we even we had like, you know, 30 days of inventory, buyers would love it. Sellers would actually still enjoy it because we'd still see, you know, multiple offers. We'd still see a lot of activity. The however is we're only talking about 400 homes throughout the entire Northwest MLS. Again, Canadian border all the way down Tri-Cities, part of Eastern Washington, Kitsap, and things like that. It's a massive area, all right? When we talk about uh, new homes that came on market, again, this is all year to, or year over year, uh, we're only up 283 homes. That's not enough, guys. For the sellers out there, you need to come on market. Now is a perfect time. In fact, had a great conversation yesterday and with that, we talked about the different elements, the different things that need to happen so that you can be successful as a seller. We'll be uh, chatting with this person, going to give out uh, some really great information, give them some market stats, tips on what to do, but more importantly, what not to do so they can make a decision is now a go time. Uh, but again, the biggest concern that she has, where does she go? She wants to downsize to a condo. Where does she go? What does she do? What is that going to look like? And does it make sense at this point? Luke's going to help. Uh, Luke's on my team. He's going to help her answer that question before we ever go down the path of, hey, let's get your home sold. Understand, you need to make sure you are looking at that because this plays a big role in that. When we come down here, pended, we're down 14.9%, almost 15%. Again, it sounds like a big number, but it's not because it's only 310 homes. 
holy smokes. Here we've got uh, solds are down 4.1%. It's only 85 homes. Why? Because our inventory is so low. We are absolutely struggling. And when you look at the charts, and Marie will post this, the dark green is, is uh, the sold and the light green is active. And again, that light green chart, we should be at 18, 22,000 homes. That is a balanced market. Well, historically, it's been a balanced market, but really, we've been driving inventory down since 2014. So the question is, is this our new norm? Is this more in line with what we are going to continue to see for a while? No, I don't see it quite like this because next year, as we slow down, as interest rates continue to climb, which they will, as we predicted, okay? They're doing it just a tad bit sooner than we predicted, but they're doing exactly what we predicted. Now, we are seeing, and we did see a little bit of a correction yesterday, and a correction in the sense that a slightly lower rate than what we had seen because we, for the last mm, seven to 10 days, we've been on an upward trend. We started to see, boop, the first time that it actually kind of came down a tad bit. So don't panic, but be prepared. Get fully underwritten. Know exactly what you're doing. Before you go out and make that offer, make sure you're giving your loan officer a call and saying, what are the rates today? And what does that do with my buying power? Okay. Now, for those of you that are paying cash, strong work, it's not a big deal. For those of you that are putting 50% or more down, less relevant. But for the average, that's going to be a big deal. We were out with a client just the other day and we were taking a look at homes. But now we had to adjust a little bit to say, hey, okay, with a half percent increase in rate, this is what happens to your, uh, you know, for the amount that you can finance. It's either more money down or we start looking at a slightly different price. And we started adjusting. We started looking that back and forth and made that adjustment. But as we're rolling forward, as we're seeing volatility, you have to do the same thing. Do not go out and make an offer based on, hey, rates are three and a, three, three and a quarter percent, I'm good to go, when in actuality, your payment actually went up about $280, $300, which might pull you out of that game, depending on what your finances are. So pay attention to rate, and this is why shopping a lender is such a bad idea, especially in today's market. Don't shop lenders. You can do it in the beginning, but commit. You have to commit. You need that person in your corner, especially when rates are volatile and they're bouncing around. You get that solid information or you're going to put your earnest money on the chopping block and potentially lose it if you can't make up the difference. Big deal. So make sure you're paying attention. Part of your to-do list, watch your 10-year treasury, okay? That's going to help you understand rate. Before you make an offer, make sure you have a solid number from your lender as to where you're at. All right, on the to-do, your furnace filter. Last week we talked about changing your filter, posted a couple of things. Funny enough, one of our clients, their furnace, uh, actually a couple of them, they're, they're, they found out they had a furnace problem. How serendipitous was that? Uh, you know, it's, it's a, one of those things where, especially with one of the families where they have a cracked heat exchanger. They did not know it. They're putting carbon dioxide in the house. Uh, they didn't know it. That's a silent killer. It's odorless, tasteless, and colorless. doesn't matter. It's, it's neutral air, so it goes wherever it goes. It's not heavy. It's not like propane gas. It's not like natural gas that, that, that floats to the top. It's neutral. So it kind of just rolls around. So understand, make sure you're testing your, your carbon monoxide detector, if it is more than seven years old, get rid of it, replace it. You should be replacing all your smoke detectors. And for those of you that took the nine volt battery out to power the, uh, the Christmas toys and whatnot, uh, it's time to swap out those batteries if you, <laughs> if you haven't already. Uh, you know, make sure you're paying attention. Swap out your filter. Don't make it breathe like it's uh, running down the street, breathing through a straw. Swap it out. Options are simple. Hey, it takes five minutes for heaven's sake. It's super fast. Just make sure you look at what the, when there's an arrow on it that says flow. Just, just make sure you do the right thing. Simple enough. You need some help? Give Jim Triple a call. I'll have Marie post his information. He'll come out. He'll take care of you guys, get you serviced up. He'll check 
to make sure you don't have a carbon monoxide issue and make sure your family is safe, which is the most important part. Because you have to ask, what's worth more, a $20 filter or your family? $20 filter or your family? It's really, it's kind of a dumb question, right? So change your filter. Have, have it checked out. Make sure that you don't have a problem, especially this time of year where they're running more. They're under more stress. Make sure you're testing it. We care. We'll have Marie post that for you. All right. The other thing. Uh, we're seeing a lot of, of uh, flooding. We, our water table has been uh, coming up with the snow melting, a bit of rain and whatnot. Walk the perimeter of your house. Make sure that you're not seeing any ponding. If you have a foundation where you have a crawl space, I know it's not very exciting. Take a flashlight, pull that lid, and take a look. All right? Uh, make sure you don't have any standing water down there. Make sure that uh, you know it's good. You don't have a bunch of rodents that have found their way in and it's dropping all your insulation down and making a disaster. Look, it's simple enough. Just don't think of those horror movies. You know, when you open, <laughs> when you open the lid and put your head in, uh, just don't think of a horror movie. Don't watch a horror movie before you look at your crawl space. There you go. All right. Do the same thing with your attic. Make sure that during the windstorm you didn't have a stick hit it or you know, that you've got uh, uh, leaking coming in from the snow on, uh, you know, on your house or, you know, something has failed, okay? Make sure you're doing that perimeter walk. It's a great day to do it today. And if you have a problem, hey, reach out. We'll help you out with that. We've got a number of vendors that can help you out. Be safe. Protect your most valuable investment. Anyway, that's it. You guys have any other questions? Let us know. The market is doing incredibly well. Do not panic about rates. They are going to bobble around. Make sure you subscribe. Share this link. We would love to hear what you guys have to say. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a beautiful day today. Take care.